Hello, I'm Ray, I'm WB6LST, and this is an Anytone 878, a very, very popular radio currently. Uh, I uh, use it every day, but I remember the first time I took it out of the box and turned it on and the screen was totally overwhelming, I was lost. So I wanted to make a video, maybe it would be a little bit helpful for other people that have uh, the same struggle, and I just wanted to share with what I learned on the display. Let's take a look. I'll be jumping between different screenshots because of the different modes of the radio as we go through the demonstration. Also, I'm running version 1.26 on this radio. So let's get started. In the upper left-hand corner, we have our signal strength meter. Looks like an antenna. Next to it, there's a little X. The X indicates that there is no signal being received right now, but if we were receiving a signal, this is what it would look like. Those vertical bars indicate that a signal is being received. Personally, my experience has been that usually I get four bars, even if the signal isn't that strong. So I'm not sure how accurate that really is, but at least it tells you there is a signal coming in. To the right of that, you have the power indicator for the transmitter. You have four levels of transmit power. So let's take a look at the four power levels that we have. We have low, medium, high, and turbo power. So now let's change screens over to the digital DMR mode. If we go into the menu and turn on Digital Monitor or Digimonitor, this is the icon that will appear. In this case, it has a single line coming out of it, which indicates a single slot. What it's doing is monitoring a single time slot in the DMR mode. If we go into the Digimonitor menu and turn on Double Slot, you can see two lines coming out of that little icon. This indicates that it's monitoring two time slots. On some other brand radios, this is known as Promiscuous Mode. Again, this is only an icon that will appear if you're in DMR mode. If you're in analog mode, you won't see this. Here's an icon I rarely see, and that's Vox. If you have Vox turned on, this icon will appear. I rarely use Vox, and I really don't know very many people that do, so I don't expect this would be a very common icon to see on your screen, but if you see it, this is for the Vox. The next icon is the GPS icon, and if GPS is turned on, you'll see this little icon image appear in the center of the screen. If GPS is not on, this will not be here. Another icon that I don't see very often is the roaming icon, as indicated by this red letter R. You'll only see this roaming indicator if roaming is turned on in the radio. And one more icon that we rarely see, and that's for Bluetooth. If you have Bluetooth turned on in the radio, this icon will appear, and if you don't use Bluetooth, you won't see this either. This letter A represents the automatic power off feature in the radio. You can go in the menu and tell the radio to turn itself off after so many minutes. So we're going to switch screens again, and we're back on the analog side of the radio. And in the upper right hand corner we have CTC, which is the abbreviation for CTCSS. It's also known as PL Tone or subaudible tone and this indicator indicates when the receiver has CTCSS turned on. It does not indicate the transmit side, only the receive side. So if you've configured the radio to require a CTCSS tone or PL tone decode, you will see this indicator, otherwise you will not. Now we're going to change screens and go back to the digital mode, the DMR mode. You'll notice instead of the CTC, it's been replaced by the letters CO3, which stands for color code number three. The color code is used as part of the transmission protocol for DMR. So in this particular case, this repeater requires the color code number three, and it is indicated on the screen here as color code number three. If you've used DMR before, then you're familiar with this, but if you're new to DMR, this is one of the things you'll have to learn. Color codes are required to communicate with the repeaters, and color codes go from color code 1 up to color code 15. Most of the time I find color codes to be 1 or 3 commonly, but this is where you'll find what color code your radio is currently operating on. The next line down is pretty obvious. We have the calendar date and we have the time of day. Note that the month is April, so we're looking at April 9th, 2022. The formatting that they use on the radio is a little different than what you might expect for the calendar date. And then we have the time of day on a 24-hour clock. In this case, it's 20 hours, 28 minutes. 
Below that we have the digital mode for DMR indicated. We're on channel one. We're on time slot one. If we were on time slot two, then it would indicate T2. So if you're in digital mode, it'll indicate which time slot it's using. And then the letter R indicates that it's a repeater. It's set up to talk on a repeater. The next line down is the channel and the zone. In this particular case, because the radio is a factory reset, factory default setting, there's nothing really programmed into the memory of the radio. They've got some frequencies in there into channel slots and into zone one. When you configure the radio for your own personal setup, you'll probably be assigning names to it. And I'll show you an example of that later on, how I've done mine. But in this particular case, they just use the frequency instead of a name. So that's why you see the frequency as being 446.325. But just like many radios on the market, you can either use a frequency or a name in the programming to assign it to that channel. It's your own personal choice at that point. The next line down is called Zone, or Zone 1 in this case. And it's called Zone 1 because it's the factory default setting and it hasn't been renamed. But you could rename it anything you want. So let's take a moment and look at this because it was a little confusing for me in the beginning. Think of zones as folders, and you put your memory channels that you've stored into the radio into zones. They've got to go somewhere. They have to go into a zone, and the radio has many, many, many zones, more than you'll probably ever use. But you've got to put them into a zone, so you get to name the zone, and you get to decide what frequencies go into that zone folder. If we look at this screen, you'll see that the upper half of it shows 446.325 and that's in zone 1. If you look above that though a little bit it's in channel 1. Drop down below channel 3 which is an analog channel is 446.575. Just like any radio it's a frequency that's stored in memory. The upper frequency is channel 1, the lower frequency is channel 3, but they're both assigned to zone 1. They have been put into the folder called zone one. You can rename that zone anything or whatever you want to call it, but it's got to go into a zone and that's what zone represents. In this case, zone one is the factory default name. And zones are very commonly used for different areas of travel. So if you're living in one area and you have a bunch of frequencies for that area and you travel to a distant city a couple of hundred miles away, you can load a different batch of frequencies into that zone and it makes it very convenient from an operations point of view so that you can change channels and move around those repeaters pretty easily by being in that zone folder of frequencies. Stepping back from zones for a moment, if you look at the screen you'll see two frequencies on here. The one on the top, 446.325, is the primary band and the frequency on the bottom is the sub band. The radio is capable of primary and sub and in this case it's showing that the upper part of the screen is the primary band. You can flip-flop those by hitting the P1 key on the keyboard and the bottom could become the primary but as we see it in this display the upper half of the screen is the primary band because it has the larger characters and the lower section is the sub band because it has the smaller characters. So now that we've seen the screen and seen a lot of information on it, it's pretty cluttered. But I want to show you what I do on my radio. I run it as a single screen or single band only. And I'll show you how I've trimmed it down. So here's a quick look at my radio and what my screen looks like. At a quick glance, I can see what's going on. Upper left-hand corner, no signal, no carrier. Medium power. I'm running uh, CTCSS decode. Uh, my battery is pretty full. It's an analog channel, channel number 278. It's identified as the San Marcos repeater, also known as Papa 9. And it is in the zone called San Marcos. The zone in the previous display was called zone one. And in my particular radio, it is zone San Marcos. So San Marcos repeater in the zone of San Marcos. 
And that's very simple and very easy to see and understand. Okay, so let's take a look at one of the DMR channels that's uh, in my radio. This is a DMR channel in my area. Starting in the upper left-hand corner, we can see that there is a carrier with a strong signal as indicated by the four bars, the four vertical bars. You can see that my transmitter is on high power and that my automatic battery cutoff is enabled. So after a given amount of time of inactivity, the radio will turn itself off. You can see that I'm running uh, color code three, which is the requirement for the repeater that I'm talking to. It says I need color code three to talk to it, and this confirms that I am indeed running color code three. The battery is nice and full. There's a digital channel 430, and it's in time slot one, and it is a repeater. Now, SMPCA3106, that is the name of a channel in memory in my radio. I could have named it anything, but because it is Talk Group California 3106, and that's how it's known, California 3106, I named that channel in my radio as San Marcos Peak SMP California 3106. That's a name I came up with. You could name it anything you want to name it, but that makes sense to me. And then below that is the zone. And in this case, it's home San Marcos zone. Remember on the other display, it said zone one. Well, in this case, we renamed it to call it home San Marcos zone. And the zone is a folder into which this memory channel 430 is stored. The only thing I might do a little different is uh, turn on the digi monitor so I could monitor the time slots one and two both at the same time. But other than that, this is how I would normally operate. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. It was a challenge for me to learn the screen. Maybe this will make it a little easier for you. If it was helpful, please like, share, subscribe, and leave some comments down below. Let me know if you'd like any more videos along the same line of explanation, this radio or perhaps some other popular radio. In the meantime, till next time, 73.